I bid you welcome. I welcome you to my house. Welcome to my house. Welcome to my home. Hello horror hounds, welcome to my horror house. Last night I checked out 47 meters down uncaged. I'm a sucker for shark movies, even though I'll acknowledge that most of them aren't very good. But I do have a soft spot for the original 47 meters down. It was a bit of a surprise hit a few years ago. I really liked the sort of stripped down basic nuts and bolts B-movie aesthetic of 47 meters down. The, the premise was in the title. It's a sort of high concept survival horror scenario that you can kind of get on board with. It's possible that you might go on a nice fancy pants holiday and it's possible that you might go cage diving with sharks. Therefore, it's mildly conceivable that you might be in that situation and it's one of those what if films. Uh, what would I do in, in that situation? 47 meters down, uncaged, is not that movie by any stretch of the imagination. It's called, you see what they did with the title, uncaged, because I guess you can't just play out the same scenario twice. This deals with uh, four young girls who essentially go scuba diving in an underwater Mayan city that one of their dads has discovered and is mapping for archaeologists to come in and do the business with it. And as sure as day follows night, the girls get trapped down in this underwater city with a bunch of sharks and the air supply running out. So already we're gilding the lily of the really nice stripped down concept of the first film. Already, if I'm being honest, we're getting a little bit silly. So what we need to do is strap ourselves in for a silly shark movie and see if that delivers the goods. I was minded very much, not least because it's a group of females underground and this time underwater. Of course, I was minded of uh, the Descent movies. The original Descent, fantastic sort of stripped back, potholing, B-monster movie that I believe our cousins in the US had a slightly different cut off that had the, the happy ending. Here in the UK, we had the nasty, everyone's dead ending, but our American cousins had the slightly more uh, upbeat ending which led to the inevitable sequel and 47 meters down uncaged does feel like uh, the inevitable ridiculous sequel to a stripped back uh, decent survival horror movie and don't get me wrong the the actual setting uh, an underground mayan city uh, that due to rising sea levels is now underwater is a fantastic location for a survival horror movie just maybe not a, a shark movie because whilst the underwater sets look great and they're peopled with these uh, life-size uh, statue figures you're never gonna as the camera moves past these eerily lit figures ever mistake them for a shark whereas if the threat was more humanoid you would constantly be searching the frame to see are, are these the statues or is this a person lurking here the lurking sharks stand out because they're shark shaped not they don't blend in with any of the background or the statues the other thing about the movie is because this area is being mapped and explored an awful lot of it has got light rigging set up in it there's there's ambient light all around and one of the things i found so effective in the original movie is that beyond the pool of light from the two girls in the shark cage it's just this inky absolute blackness the unknown the sort of cosmic nature of the ocean depths this alien world was the source of the true horror in the first movie anything could come at you from anywhere now in that movie it just happens to be sharks but there's a scene where one of them has to swim out over a giant um, rift and 
the ocean bottom just disappears and uh, this tiny speck of light in this ocean of darkness and that's a true little shiver, a little sliver of cosmic horror that you don't get in the sequel. Everything's shot nicely, it looks great, it looks eerie, it looks like a horror movie set but there's none of that eternal inky blackness any shark movie lives or dies by its sharks and uh, I have to say the CG sharks in this movie look awful. And talking about gilding the lily, they're not just sharks, they're a type of great white shark that got cut off in this cave system and have evolved into being sort of blind albino cave dwelling sharks because heaven knows normal great white sharks aren't scary enough so you've got this sort of nonsense on top of nonsense and then you add in the behavior of the sharks which isn't shark behavior at all it's much more akin to a slasher from uh, from an 80s slasher movie, they'll slowly creep up on people, they'll stalk people, and then, then they'll strike. There's lots of them sticking their snouts into small crevices and trying to snap at people getting away from it. It's all great for a, for a thrill ride, but don't get me wrong, this is not a, a shark movie where the sharks look natural or behave in any way like sharks do. If you can get on board with that, though, then there are things to like. For a start, the score is fantastic. It's by a, a duo called Tom and Andy, and it's got a real tangerine dreamy kind of vibe to it, a real ambient soundscape going on that I am a huge fan of. Alongside this uh, dreamy ambient synth score is a soundtrack populated pretty much entirely by 80s tunes and I'm not, I'm not sure what the film is going for with, with the constant 80s music. That one got past me. If anyone's got any ideas why that might be, I don't know. I mean, I'm of a certain age, so it was, it was, they were, all the tunes were welcome to me. They just sort of seemed weirdly out of place. It did lead, however, to a really creepy scene uh, with the Carpenters uh, playing, which really felt like it belonged in a, a slasher movie. Uh, the maze-like underground Mayan city, the constant checking of the air meter to see how much air they've got left, all gives the movie the feel of a video game. And if you are on board with that vibe, once the movie leans into its ridiculousness, then there is a lot of fun to be had. There are points when I think the movie does realise how ridiculous it is. There is a nod to the scene from Jaws with Ben Gardner's head. There's a nod to Deep Blue Sea and Samuel L. Jackson's speech. There's a great sequence when the girls finally do descend into a moment of sheer blackness that up until that point the movie had been sorely lacking, um, where there's there's no light save for one strobing red light. So we get a, a sequence of still black and red images that's really effective. And by the time you get to the sea vortex chamber, the film has become so silly that you really want the movie to lean into its daftness and to be absolutely fair to it for its final hurrah it really does it just gets ridiculous and by that point it had won me over once you know you're not getting a serious shark movie and once you know you're getting a video game cg shark thrill ride action slasher movie then if you're down with that, you can treat this like a roller coaster, and it's a pretty fun roller coaster. I would say that the first film has more bite to it, uh, but this film is probably more fun in a bubblegummy kind of way.